हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू द थर्ड लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ डीएनए रिपेयर मैकेनिज्म्स इन आवर अर्लियर लेक्चर्स वी ऑलरेडी डिस्कस द एसओएस मैकेनिज्म्स एंड द डायरेक्ट डीएनए रिपेयर मैकेनिज्म्स वी आर एक्चुअली फॉलोइंग दिस सीरीज साइकिल वेयर वी कैन सी इफ द सेल गेट्स एनी डीएनए डैमेज ऑलराइट अल्टीमेटली इट गोस थ्रू अ सीरीज ऑफ चेक पॉइंट्स सो इट स्टार्ट्स विद एसओएस रिपेयर एंड देन अंडर डीएनए रिपेयर इफ एसओएस रिपेयर is able to manage it then dna repair starts and number 1 is direct repair by the methods that we already discussed now we'll be going we'll be starting the series of dna repair proper in eukaryote and we will start with the first mechanism that is highlighted in this table which is mismatch repair all right so you should know when is a mismatch repair implicated basically the name mismatch means when there is a when there is no match so what do we mean by match all right uh, in the sugar phosphate backbone these are the nitrogenous bases isn't it so and a basically pairs up with t and g matches with c this is chagoff's rule it may so happen during dna replication that any nitrogenous base is wrongly added okay so there is a mismatch so what happens in this mismatch okay we'll be discussing the uh, prokaryotic mechanisms and i will tell you what are the homologs or analog or the counterpart in eukaryotes mainly in case of undergraduate medical students it's the prokaryotic mechanism that is asked in exam so basically what happens the mismatch site is first recognized okay and then the machinery or the mechanism of the proteins that uh, tackles or takes care of this removes all right it uh, cuts the sequence where there is a mismatch and then ultimately a new dna uh, strand is formed and ultimately that strand is ligated all right so what happens suppose this is a mismatch strand suppose here we had a mismatch this is the complementary bases and here there is a mismatch it will be first identified i'll tell you who identifies and then this whole sequence a portion of this sequence is actually removed okay so now it is like this there's a gap in the sequence okay so the next step what happens I mean, this leads to this and this leads to ultimately formation of a new strand by dna polymerase and ultimately joining of the new strands by dna ligase so the last two steps are actually common for all repair mechanisms whenever there is any gap somehow we need to land into a gap or excised or cut portion then dna polymerase 3 will come and synthesize a new strand of dna and dna ligase will join that part so this identification is actually done by this mismatch identification is done by mute s protein and mute s protein actually recruits for the machinery so let us now see uh, what are the proteins that mute s actually recruits so first mute s protein all right just stay tuned because i'll be showing a 3d video after which will be easier for you to understand after you take down these notes remember when you are given any question in exam it's always best to give a flow diagram just like this if you try to write a paragraph a big answer examiner will get bored and you will also not get good marks compared to somebody who is writing the same content but in a more structured and tabulated and box diagram figure right so the thing is uh, mute s will scan the dna all right it will recognize the mismatch uh, based on the daughter strand next what happens it signals or it brings mute l okay mute l forms a link between the mute s and another mute protein that is mute h which is activated by this one mute l so mute s will get connected to mute h by mute l and who activates mute h mute l activates mute h okay what does mute h do mute h actually binds to the hemi methylated gtc sequence this is a complex thing to understand first you need to understand that there is a parent sequence and there is a daughter strand we are talking about any error that has been done in the daughter strand okay while replicating right so we need to repair this 
Now the parent strand is methylated. That strands, the bases in the parent strand are always methylated. Therefore, and the daughter strand bases are non-methylated. So it's easier for mutates to understand or know which one is the daughter strand. Specifically, what it does, mute H searches for a sequence that is GATC. I mean the sequence of guanine, adenine, thymine and cytosine, this GATC sequence is needed by mute H. What it will do, it will cut over there. So just remember to start with identification is by mute S, mute L links the mute S to mute H and identify activates mute H and mute H actually cuts at the GATC sequence. So this is actually what happens. We, this is the area of error. Mute S will come and identify, mute S will recruit mute L, mute L will activate mute H. So there will be, this portion will be cut, okay. Uh, actually this, suppose this is the error site, it will be cut in the 5 prime end, a few bases upstream to this one, okay. However, in the 3 prime end, mute S, mute H will continue to search till it gets a GATC sequence and it will cut over here. So you see mute H has cut right at the GATC sequence and now there is a gap. Alright. So who will come and just one more thing after cutting we this is the actually uh, linear or step ladder model of DNA. In reality DNA is like this isn't it so. So after this sequence is cut suppose this is the GATC sequence and this is the 5 prime sequence we need to unwind this and mute H also has got helicase activity okay. This is the importance of the helicase activity. Helicase actually unzips the double stranded or coiled DNA. And now this is uh, resynthesized. The DNA strand is resynthesized with the help of DNA polymerase and it is sealed by DNA ligase. So, this is in short or in a 2D diagram what you need to write in your answer script. Now, let us look at the three dimensional video which will be easier for you to understand. So this is an E. coli, all right, because we are describing the prokaryotic system and inside the E. coli, this is a DNA, right? And uh, we all know in this DNA, bases are matched adenine to thymine and cytosine to guanine, A, T, G and C, all right. This uh, matching is actually uh, taken care of during replication. So a uh, DNA polymerase when it replicates it makes sure that the parent strand it scans the uh, basis of the parent strand and it forms exact copy in the daughter strand okay so right now we are seeing this dna polymerase which is actually dna polymerase 3 to be precise which is exactly adding the same complementary basis in the daughter strand all right now this is normal in case of any problem, suppose there is a mismatch, okay. So just you saw this area, it is having a mismatch, the strands are not fitting, okay. This is a diagrammatic illustration. Suppose there is a mismatch over here, A is not going into T. So what will happen? Now mute S will come, all right. This is the first protein that is identifying. So this is mute S, right. Mute S, as I told you, is now recruiting mute L, right? And mute L is now recruiting mute H. Mute H will now scan and will search for a GATC sequence, okay? This is the guanine, adenine, thymine, cytosine sequence. So GATC sequence has been identified by mute H and mute H will cut right at the GATC sequence. However, it's easier for mute H to identify the daughter strand because the parent strand, the red one is methylated. Now we need to know that mute H is linked to mute H by mute L. L is the linker. So a cut has been made at the 5 prime position and at the just at the junction of the mismatch. Okay, this is the GATC sequence. 
where the cut has been made. So an exonucleus will now remove the entire sequence and the gap will be created. Fine. A gap, as soon as the gap is created, I told you it cuts somewhere a few bases upstream to the mismatch area. Now DNA polymerase 3 will come and it will form a new daughter strand taking care that there is no error now. Okay. So when all the things have been done properly, ultimately the NICs will be sealed by DNA ligase. So this is in short the mechanism of mismatch repair. And now you see the whole DNA has been restored without any error. So we need to know few clinical importance about mismatch repair. The one disease that you need to know which happens if this mismatch repair mechanism is faulty is hereditary non-polyposis colonic cancer or in short we tell it's HNPCC. Okay. Now this is the autosomal dominant variety in which the mutation in gene HMSH2 and HMLH1. Now you must be asking that what are all these? We just discussed about mute S and mute H. Isn't it so? Uh, these are all eukaryotic counterparts of mute S, mute H and mute L. Just as I told you, we need to know the mechanism in prokaryote and we need, to, we need to know the disease process in eukaryote. So just know this, a defective mismatch repair mechanism will produce HNPCC, hereditary non-polyposis, colonic cancer. And as I told you, these are the homologs or eukaryotic counterparts of these mute S and mute H. As an undergrad student, you don't need to know. But if you are a postgraduate student who is looking for solving MCQs, looking to solve MCQs, then these are very important for you and you need to know. These will be given as diagnosis of exclusion in mismatch repair based MCQs. So, so this is our end goal. We'll be discussing each and everything that is shown over here. And right now we have studied mismatch repair, which is a characteristic of single base alteration. All right. So I thank you a lot and feel free to get back to me with any queries in the comment section. I will see you soon with the next series of this video. Till then, bye and take care.